boot camps. Just like the military has boot camps, coding itself has boot camps as well. And basically what a boot camp is, is it takes you from ground zero all the way up to creating your own application. And boot camps such as Dev Mountain, the one sponsoring this video, offer a totally immersive experience. They offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring. There's a whole culture to Dev Mountain that's gonna allow you to learn and gain the most experience while you're there. And then once you're out of Dev Mountain, that's not where it stops. They also help you start your career. So they'll help you optimize your resume. They'll give you career and interview prep. And then you'll get lifetime access to a thing called Meet and Hire, which will basically get you connected with those employers. They offer web and iOS, and they offer many different ways to join their network, such as immersive, part-time, or if you want to do it online, you can do it that way as well. But as for immersive and part-time, they have different locations in Utah, Texas, and Arizona. If you're interested in Dev Mountain, I'll leave a link for them in the description down below. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the video, and thanks to Dev Mountain for sponsoring this video. Hey, what's up guys, Jared here, and today we're gonna be working on uh, something, something awesome. Welcome to part two of how to uh, use Stripe inside of your iOS application. Are you kidding me? It's been over a month now. You gotta stop doing this, Jared. It's been, it's been way too long. All right, I'll try not to do it anymore. <laughs> Sorry. But anyway, today we're going to be working on creating charges with Stripe and exactly how we'd go about that. But I also want to frame this around the idea that you can apply what I'm teaching you today to anything that's in Stripe. So although yes, I'm going to be teaching you specifically how to create charges, these principles and rules and everything apply to uh, generally how you would do everything else. So we currently have our application set up. So. This is what we have. We have a bunch of products. We swipe through and then when you click on one, it's going to take you over here where you can enter your payments and shipping information. Now with this payment and shipping information, nothing is currently happening. So what we need to do is make something happen. So what we're going to do right now is just look at the documentation and see exactly what's needed to create a payment or what can be added to a payment. So this is going to be, I'll put a link in the description down below, but it's the API for Stripe stripe.com slash docs slash API. And in here, it's going to tell you everything that you need to uh, create a charge, or it's going to tell you everything that you need to have a balance or payouts, refunds, all that kind of jazz. So if you want to work with charges right now, all you need to do is say charges, the charge object, and then the charge object here is going to show you exactly what you, what can be added in there. Now, if you want to create a charge, you just click on that and you can see that the amount is required, the currency is required. You can add an application fee. This is if you're selling with vendors and stuff like that. Uh, capture, description, destination, all this jazz. But as you can see, all you really now need is that amount and currency. So as you can see down here, we have shipping and that's going to be shipping information for the charge. So they either you can ship to them or you can just have it as a different way of clarification. But there's also other things down here. So you can see customer and source. So as you can see, it's not, it doesn't mark it underneath required, but it does say that either customer or source is required. So this is all the information that we want to pass along to our charge object. Now, another thing I want to talk about real quick is I didn't discuss this in the last video, but if you go to Stripe here, you go to your dashboard and then you look at your projects. Now, if we hit into our API right here, you'll see that you have the publishable key and also the secret key. Now, one thing I didn't discuss is there's test keys. So what you want to do is just say view test data, and that's going to give you some test keys. Now, the cool thing about having test keys is Stripe actually provides you with a credit card that you can charge in this test realm. So that way you won't have to charge your credit card every time you want to test something, you'll be able to use their card. Now in order to use this, all you would really need to do is go ahead, go over here to my checkout view controller. And then up here, you can see you have a Stripe pub publishable key and you're just going to switch that out for your test. And it should say PK underscore test. And then also inside of your index.js right here, we have var stripe equals require stripe sk test. And then this is gonna be your secret key that you put in here. So I'm just gonna, you would wanna go ahead and reveal your test key token and place that right where that key is. Last time we used the publishable, so just switch this out. Now with all that out of the way, now we need to go ahead and start creating a charge. And as you can see, is my API client already has this complete charge function. And this is connected with the button. So if we head back over here to my uh, checkout view controller right here, let's go ahead and look at my API client uh, complete charge. So you can see this is called right here inside of the func payment context and then my API client dot shared client dot complete charge. And then inside of here, you're entering the amount, the shipping address, the shipping method, and then completion. 
Now, the only problem with this is we're not calling this into our index.js right over here. We don't have any function that would handle the complete charge. So let's go ahead and add that. But overall, it's gonna be like anything. You're just gonna take the information and push it to the index.js, and then you're gonna handle it up there and then throw the information back and figure out what to do with it back in your application. So let's go ahead and go up here and say app.post, open the closed parentheses like so, then go ahead and add apostrophes, and then inside of here, this is gonna be, let's go over here to my API client super quick. And you can see that we have the URL, appending path component, and this is gonna be charge. So you just wanna go ahead and go back over here and just say slash charge. And then just as we did with our ephemeral keys, we have rec and res. So let's go ahead and say rec request and then res result equals arrow, then go ahead, open close curly brackets like so, and then add a semicolon at the end there. And then we'll add stuff into this function in just a second. All right, so before we dive into this, let's go back over here and look at our requireds again. So first off, we require the amount and the currency. Let's go ahead and check out our uh, source right here, our complete charge right here, and see if we provide it any of those things. So as you can see, we provide it here with the source, but after this, I'm also gonna say the currency and then we're gonna say this is equivalent to, and what the currency is, is whatever currency you're using. So this is the three digit ISO or whatever it is, and you're just gonna go ahead and put in USD. If you're using something else, you would put something else in there. If you wanna take a look at all the ISO codes, here they are. Uh, you can just go back over here to the docs and click on that link and you're good to go. Now with our source here, this gets a little bit interesting. Um, I don't wanna pass along the Stripe ID. What I do wanna do is because this credit card is already saved into our customer as we're doing this, why don't we just take, pass along the customer ID? Because as you can remember, inside of our Stripe documentation here, uh, you'll be able to see that as we create a chart, we have creating a charge, we just need a customer or a source. And passing along your customer is way easier. You could pass along a source, but that comes with creating a token and other things like that stuff we can go over another day because it's a little bit complicated. But overall, let's go ahead and just do this with the customer. So all you wanna do is we're passing along inside of here, var parameters for our complete charge. You're just gonna go ahead and switch this out for our customer. And then for this, you're just gonna go ahead and pass along your customer ID. So I already, I just have it down here in a string, but you can honestly put this wherever you want. So I'm gonna put that right in there. Then we're gonna pass along this customer when this is called, and it's gonna pass it along to Heroku. So now we're gonna take that and do cool stuff with it. So we're just gonna say var my customer will be equal to my request dot body dot, and then just customer colon. Then we also need an amount. So I'm gonna say var amount will be equal to request dot body dot amount col uh, semicolon. And then we also need a currency finally. So we're just gonna say var currency will be equal to my request dot body dot currency. And then a semicolon after that. Then with this, we're just gonna go ahead and say stripe dot charges dot create, in the which we're gonna go ahead and create a charge. So all we're gonna do is say open close parentheses, open close curly bracket like so. And then we're just gonna say v customer colon customer comma uh, amount colon amount comma and then we're going to say currency colon currency and then that's it then once you're done with this you're just going to go ahead right after these uh, curly brackets here you're going to say comma function in the which this is going to be error error comma or charge so it's either going to pass along an error or it's actually going to charge your stuff so now I'm going to say open close curly bracket like so. And then inside of here, you're just going to say if open close parentheses error. So this is going to be if it exists, then we're going to do this. Otherwise, we're going to do this. So if there is an error, we want to go ahead and pass along as we did down here inside of our ephemeral keys. You can see we have console.log. So this is going to be if there is an error and we're just going to pass along if what the error is and then we're going to pass along that something wrong happened and we get a status code of 500. Then for our else statement here, we're just going to uh, pass along the status of 200, which basically says everything's okay. And then after this, you're just going to say dot send, open close parentheses, and then we don't need to pass along anything else. Then we're going to go ahead and hit command S to save that, head back over here to our uh, no, uh, terminal, and then we're just going to say git add dot git commit dash m demo, and then git push Heroku master. 
and that's going to go ahead and pass along whatever we just saved right there and we should be able to create uh, charges onto our Stripe account. Now something I did want to go over while this is building and running is we want to test with a certain credit card. So Stripe actually has these credit cards for you to try out and it's very simple and easy to do. So you go to Stripe dot com slash docs slash testing and then you go down here and you can see there's card numbers tokens and other things like that that you can try out for yourself so if you wanted to try out a token you could do it with token visa as a test thing but again we're not going to go over that for now we're just going to go over the card numbers here so we have the card numbers we're going to go ahead and pass along the visa so our visa here is going to be 424242 four, two, four, two, or you can use any of these other things to test out how their credit cards are handled in the same way and see if they are recognized as well. Now if you're doing international stuff you can go ahead and pass along international car uh, cards and tokens depending on where you live. It's pretty cool. So now inside of terminal everything's been uploaded so now I'm gonna go ahead and build and run this again and we're gonna hopefully get a charge going over to our account and our customer. All right, so here we are inside of our application and let's go ahead and try buying this blue shirt here. It's gonna ask for your payment information. So you're gonna go in here and enter in that payment information. So right here, go ahead and enter in your test number. And then for your month, month, year, year, you're just gonna enter in something that's later than today. So I'm just gonna put 424, I guess, <laughs> uh, 2024. And then for your CVC here, uh, put in random whatever you it doesn't matter what you put in there just gonna work so now i'm gonna go ahead and click done and then that's going to actually add that card over to my stripe account so if we head back over here to my customers you'll be able to see customer jared and then now cards now i have that card added right onto my account and then if we want to buy this you got to enter in your shipping information so go ahead and do that jared davidson wherever you live <laughs> just go ahead and enter that go ahead click next and then pick your shipping method. I'm gonna go ahead and charge myself six bucks because why not, just to see if that works. And let's go ahead and buy it. And boom, success. Uh, you bought a blue t-shirt, sweet. Now let's go ahead and see if that is registered inside of our payments here. So I've bought a few things, so that's why there's two payments here. But as you can see, this payment right here is the one that I just made at 11.03 and it was 26 bucks, payment received, everything is working good. Now all you would need to do to get this working in your own application is to go to here to your checkout view controller and switch the publishable key. And then also in here you want to switch out this uh, secret key for whatever your publishable and secret key may be with Stripe. That way the charges will actually be real and not test test data. Now another thing I didn't touch on is this parameters for shipping. So we actually have in here the shipping address and the shipping method, but we don't actually add that into uh, the index.js quite yet. So it's pretty simple. You just go in here to charge. You say var shipping will be equal to request.body.shipping and then semicolon after that. Then for the charges right here, you're just gonna go ahead and put in shipping, colon shipping, and then make sure there's a comma right after that. But you should go ahead and hit command us to save that. Head over here to your terminal, and then you're just gonna submit this to Heroku. And then while that's going up there, we should be able to build and run our Xcode project again. And then here we are. So now I'm gonna go ahead, open up this shirt here, and let's go ahead and enter in the payment shipping information. We already have our shipping information in there, so go ahead and fill it out if you don't click next and then let's go ahead have FedEx why not and maybe we can see that shipping method and boom we bought it now let's go ahead and check if that is actually inside of our payments right here uh, let's go ahead load new payments here's our new payment and as you can see this is the payment details and you can see the address right down here with the the carrier Sweet. If you want to know anything else about Stripe, uh, let me know in the comments down below. I'm trying to learn it in my own application. So any questions or things you want to ask me about it, I'll try and do a video on it as soon as possible. Anyway, have an awesome day. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.